Hey guys, Justin here, and welcome back to the eighth math major example video following our course on number theory. Now, today's video is going to be on Euler's totient function, and if you haven't seen our main course videos on Euler's totient function, I've included a link to our playlist on our series on number theory in the card above. Make sure to click that and watch those videos before you watch this one. And with that out of the way, let's get into our first example. So for our first question, we are going to want to find the remainder of 41 to the 75th power when divided by 3. Now to do that, we are going to use Fermat's little theorem. And for those of you who don't remember, we're going to recall Fermat's little theorem, which is a to the p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p. So for this, we have 41 to the 75th power and we're trying to reduce mod 3. So what we're going to want to do is rearrange this 41 so that we have something to the second power is congruent to 1 mod p, and then reduce whatever we have left over. So to begin, we know that 41 is congruent to 2 mod p, which means we can write that 41 to the 75th power is congruent to 2 to the 75th mod p, but we can rewrite that as 2 to the 37 squared, which will be congruent to 1 mod p by Fermat's little theorem, times 2 to the first power, mod 3. And that brings us to our final answer. So we have 41 to the 75 is congruent to 1 times 2 to the first mod 3, which is congruent to 2 mod 3. So let's get into the next example. So the general rule for these types of problems is you reduce the base of the number so in this case, that'll be 473 mod p, which in this case is mod 5, and you reduce the exponent mod phi of p. So we're going to reduce 38 mod phi of 5, which in this case is 4, as 5 is prime, and phi of a prime is just p minus 1. So 473 mod 5 is going to be negative 2, which is going to be 3, so this is going to be congruent to 3 mod 5. And 38 reduced mod 4 is going to be 2. So that is going to give us 473 to the 38th power is congruent to 3 squared mod 5. And 3 squared is 9, which is of course is congruent to 4 mod 5, which gives us our final answer, 4 mod 5. So for number 3, we're going to be using Fermat's little theorem to quickly reduce these. So beginning with the first one, we know that a to the 12th power is congruent to 1 mod 13. So we're going to want to rearrange our 512 to be able to express it as a 12th power. And plugging it into a calculator, I can see that 12 is a divisor of 372, so that finishes that one off right away. We have that 512 to the 372nd power is congruent to 1 mod 13. For number 2, we know that a to the 16th power is congruent to 1 mod 17. We can see that 32, 32 is divisible by 16, which means we can write this as 1 times 3,444 to the first power, mod 17. And all we need to do is reduce 3,444. Well, what is that? That is congruent to 10. So we have that 3,444 to the 3,233 mod 17 is congruent to 10 mod 17. Moving on to our third one, by Fermat's little theorem, we know that a to the 22nd is congruent to 1 mod 23. Well, we know that 22 times 20 is equal to 440, so we can rewrite 123 to the 456 in the following way. We will have 123 to the 20th power to the 22nd power times 123 to the 16th power and we want to reduce that mod 23. But we know that that first term goes to 1, so that leaves us with 123 to the 16th that we want to reduce mod 23. So now that we've reduced our exponent all we can, we're going to want to reduce our base, so we're going to reduce 123 mod 23, and that's going to give us 8. So we have 123 to the 16th is congruent to 8 to the 16th mod 23. Now we know that 8 to the 4th power is equal to 4,096 
but we know that 23 times 178 is equal to 4094, which means that 8 to the 4th is congruent to 2 mod 23. So we can rewrite 8 to the 16th as 8 to the 4th 4 times. with each being congruent to 2 mod 23. So to summarize that, we have 123 to the 456 is congruent to 16 mod 23. Now for our last example, I will pass it off to Michael and he will finish this video off. So we'll finish this video off with the following example. So let's suppose that P is prime and P does not divide A. So that's our setup for Fermat's theorem. Furthermore, we want to suppose that we have a number m between 1 and p minus 1 chosen to be the smallest such number that a to the m is congruent to 1 mod p. Then our goal is to show that m divides p minus 1. And we're going to use a standard trick to prove divisibility, and that is use the division algorithm and show that that remainder must be equal to 0. Okay, so like I said, we want to use the division algorithm with p minus 1 and m. So that means we can write p minus 1 as m times q plus r. We know that r must be between 0 and m minus 1, just again by the division algorithm. OK, so now let's notice that a to the r is congruent to a to the r times 1 mod p, but that's the same thing as a to the r times a to the m all to the q power mod p. We just multiplied a fancy version of 1. Now using exponent rules, we see that this is congruent to a to the m q plus r mod p. But then by what we have up here, that's the same thing as a to the p minus 1 mod p. Next, using Fermat's little theorem, we know that is congruent to 1 mod p. Great. So now we really kind of branch this into two cases. Although I think you could maybe like finish this with one sentence if you wanted to. So the first case would be r equals 0. But notice if r is equal to 0, then we have p minus 1 equals m times q, which is the same thing as saying that m divides p minus 1. Then next would be r is not equal to 0, which means that r is bigger than 0. But that tells us that r is between 0 and m, like restrictively. So in other words, it doesn't include 0 and it doesn't include m. But let's notice that that contradicts the minimality of r. So that's given that we know that a to the r is congruent to 1 mod p. So this contradicts minimality, I should have said, of our number n, m. And that's, again, because a to the r is congruent to 1 mod p. And that's a good place to stop.